I struggled. I mean, after I had my firstborn, my after pictures, I have after pictures, and it's. I, I I definitely went through a phase that I didn't I wasn't motivated. I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna look better. I'm not gonna. This is the most fat I've ever had in my body. I'm not gonna get rid of it. Like it's just your mind is just constantly playing on that. And I I'm so happy that I went through that experience because now I can a lot more. Um, I I can relate to my clientele so much more now because I very recently felt so down in the dumps, but. Every, the way that I looked at it is that every single meal can either advance me or, you know, put me back. So if I fail on a meal, say that I, you know, went out and I decided to eat pizza or whatever, um, the next meal, I can still make up for it because the next meal I can still make the better choices. And it's, it, it was about not beating myself up about all the poor decisions, but just looking at the next decision Let's, Let's get, get the next, next meal right. And, and then from there, there, you just keep going and going. And then once, once you start, start to lose weight, you kind of get into like this rhythm and you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, pushing. and um, yeah, yeah, I, I, it's, it's tough to be selfish enough as a mom to want to look good. So many times I thought, is this right? Maybe I should be with my kids. Like here I am at the gym and, you know, like my kids are, it's usually my husband. So it's not like it's, he needs to spend time with them anyways. Right. So, but even if somebody else is watching them, like sometimes I felt guilty, like here I am at the gym and they should, you know, I should be with my kids, investing in my kids. But I just think that that's such a wrong way to look at it because if I'm feeling bad about myself, my attitude sucks. And I will then be a worse mom. But if I am doing something for myself and I feel good about myself and um, I, it just, it reflects on my parenting because I'm a way better mom when I'm doing things for myself. Sure. Yeah. I'm just a way better person, nicer person when I'm taking care of myself and I feel good. So I'm always in a better mood. So I yes. Can, yeah. And talk to us about... Because working with women, one of the things that you mentioned, it's kind of like you get on a roll once you start losing. And one of the things I find is when women are getting their food and balance, they, they start losing and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not starving. This is easy. I can do this. I mean, it's not like we, what about the, so many women that are starving or counting calories? Is counting calories the way to go to get the results that you want? I'm glad, I'm glad that you asked that because that's what... I kind of preach <laughs> in my cookbook is that you don't have to count calories. And, and, and again, I kind of go back to if you're going to be competing on at a fitness show or if you're going to do like a fitness photo shoot or something like that where you want to look extremely lean, then yes, that's when calorie counting um, might be important. But for like the average person, like right now, for sure, no calorie counting. Um, I have no interest in calorie counting. Yeah, yeah. And it's not effective because you don't know, you can't see what's going on inside your body. So there's a thermodynamics of food. How do you know how many calories your body is burning when it's digesting food? You have genetics that play a role. You have your activity level that play a role. Um, you have your metabolic type that, that, that affected as well as, and as well as the foods that you eat. So I just don't think that calorie counting works. And I think that we get so stuck on calories that we don't realize that if you just eat nutritious food, things that are, um, you know, grown in the wild, you can, you can gather or hunt kind of thing. Um, if you don't eat with that kind of mentality, then, um, then you're, you're not going to be, you're going to just be frustrating yourself because I don't think that we can properly count calories. Yeah. And especially these days, it's, I think it's become even more popular with all the apps now that we have and the different technology devices to try to track yeah. our calories and that's really, you know, definitely in line with what I'm, when I'm working with women, really getting them to look at what they're eating. And, you know, they always ask me, well, how many calories should I be having? And then I tell them, don't worry about that. That's not what we're looking at. And it really is freeing when you're not sitting there and having to count every little calorie. And then so many of these devices, they, they're not accurate because it's only as accurate as what you put into the device. And like you said, there's so many other factors that are playing into our 
how many calories we're actually burning and how many we need. So it really is nice to have, and you've done one thing about that's great about your cookbook is for those that maybe don't want to hire a chef to come in and teach them how to cook or maybe don't feel like that that's something they could do. You've already done that. You've done the, you've done the work. And so now they have access to this done for you cookbook where they can just kind of follow what you've already mapped out for them. So I think that's a really great thing. And I think that you, um, do you have it with you, the, the cookbook? So you can kind of, I want everybody to see this, this, there it is, the Flavalicious Cooking Cookbook. And I just want to tell you, I love the power cookies. Those are, I love that she has all kind of different yummy stuff and even cookies in there, ladies. So, so I was excited about cookies that have chocolate in them. Good job on that. <laughs> oh, I'm a chocolate, chocolate lover. lover. I'm a woman, right? Exactly. <laughs> tell us about the cookbook and kind of the process you went into with making the cookbook and how that all, we know kind of how you started cooking yourself, but the process when you started the cookbook and how it came to fruition. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll just show you. It's coil bound, bound, but it has some. Um, it's it can stand up, so that when you flip through it, it actually stands up, which is super cool. So I don't know if people could see that, but therefore, you know, I because I'm I am a recipe recipe book junkie. Um, I it drives me crazy when I flip through and then the pages shut on me. But anyways, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so I started actually doing this cookbook before I had my daughter, started putting a bunch of recipes together, and um, like I said, I think that the nutrition aspect has been missing in in my clientele, and a lot of my women, when I would post recipes on my blog, they would, they would go crazy, and um, so I just... I decided just to put everything that I learned from my cooking into a cookbook. So it's not just recipes, but it actually shows you all of the tips and tricks um, of what I learned from the chef that I hired, which um, makes it unique. I, I really think that it's going to help women see that you can grab, you know, some cilantro and some basil and keep them, you know, in your fridge and how to utilize them and make your food very, very flavorful. Um, so yeah, I was in a major transition and, um, I had a, a local food blogger who was helping me, um, with my meals. My husband and I both work from home. And she, um, she's actually, she's actually uh, a relative. And so she would cook for Vince and I and bring food over just as I, I had had a C-section after Amelia. And so I wasn't able to like move around very well. And so I was almost done my cookbook and she brought over all these amazing meals. And I was like, it just dawned on me. I'm like, you know what? Can you, the food that you are cooking for me, can you put those into my cookbook? Can I use these recipes? And she was like, absolutely. So that was kind of how I finished it off. So um, I definitely didn't have a ton of time at that point. And um, yeah, so we put it into a cookbook. And those are the exact recipes that I, that helped me shed all of my pregnancy weight. Um, so there's no, there's nothing, you know, I feel like some people don't, they're not, um, um, they don't show you exactly what they're doing, right? They, they'll say, oh, yes, that, this is what I'm eating and this is how I work out, but it's not actually what they're doing. They end up like they're really starving themselves or they're going no, car no carbohydrates or something, but this is actually legit what I ate and lost. I gained 40 pounds with Amelia when I was pregnant with her, and I had 25 left after the six weeks when I started to um, work out, and it was legit fat. And it helped me. I didn't, I wasn't starving myself. I um, didn't work out like crazy. I didn't have a lot of time and my daughter was very attached to mommy. And so, um, yeah, it was easy. It was easy weight loss, which is really, really cool. That is awesome. And you may have just answered this question, but tell me are there other things that, what makes your cookbook different than other ways that may be different than any other cookbooks out there. There's so many cookbooks out there on the market. So what do you think yeah. is different about yours in particular? Well, when I go to buy cookbooks I, or recipe books, the problem that I found was that there was always some ingredients that weren't healthy. And it was really hard. I would Google, for instance, um, healthy recipes, and they come up with all these recipes, and they don't, 
ingredients. They, they have, have all these bad ingredients. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, does it, is the, is, 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 if something's healthy, does, does it just mean gluten-free? There is so much more than, than that. Every single ingredient that I use in this cookbook is healthy. So you don't have to substitute with anything. Um, I think that is unique because... Um, yeah, I, I just, I haven't myself found, I, I always go through recipes and be like, oh, well, that's not healthy. Like, they use this, they use soy, they use wheat, they use, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, this is so frustrating. It's only, for me, knowing what is wrong, it's easier for me just to take it out. But women who are trying to lose weight and don't know what to do, and they're um, depending on this healthy recipe book to help them lose weight they don't know that 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 those ingredients aren't healthy so they end up just becoming frustrated again and not losing the weight that they should and um yeah that was one thing that I wanted in my cookbook like absolutely clean squeaky squeaky clean but I also wanted to make it so that people can learn how to cook so there's a lot of cooking tips and that they won't have crazy imbalanced hormones, feeling like crap, um, feeling sluggish. Like you're actually going to have a ton more energy. You're going to look better and feel better and function better. And um, yeah, I think I think that's that's what makes Flaw Delicious Cooking so unique. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you for a for doing this interview and just sharing your knowledge and what's your, your own personal journey and how you've been through being a mom. I know so many ladies can relate to that and losing after pregnancy weight. Are there any things that you think that women pre pregnancy, during pregnancy and post pregnancy should be thinking about that maybe, you know, you maybe wish that someone had told you, or maybe you did have the foresight to think about that maybe women should be thinking about. Yes. Oh my goodness. goodness. So before, before I got pregnant, I had very strong abs and it really helped me during my pregnancy. Um, and just having muscle, muscle on my body really helped. I was not sore ever. I didn't have back pain. I didn't have any of those problems. Uh, I think largely because I was in shape before I got pregnant. So if you are thinking about getting pregnant, um, I would say get in shape before because it does so much to so much good for the body. And then during pregnancy, keep up with the weights because you're going to have so much and huge shift of gravity as your belly extends, putting so much pressure on your back and all your joints. Lots of women that I know that are close to me terrible pregnancies because they're just they're not fit they don't have that muscle to help support so definitely keep up with that pregnancy yoga was a lifesaver for me love pregnancy yoga and then after I think just doing what you can don't go out like gung-ho I'm gonna I remember like trying to do like pull-ups and stuff I went from being super strong to being super weak and very very slowly and gradually getting up my strength. I mean, I've been working out since my son was six weeks. He's now almost eight months old, and I'm still not back mm-hmm. um, strength-wise, and that's okay. Uh, I think just going slowly and, you know, not um, not killing myself, being able to advance slowly, keeping um, all my joints intact so I can go back from my next workout, and uh, also, it really helps with breast milk. If you don't go crazy in your workouts, it helps you keep your breast supply nice and high. <laughs> your breast milk supply. Yeah, that's great, great advice. And uh, I've worked with women, you know, that before they've gotten pregnant, during pregnancy, and then it's really neat to see some of them. I mean, they really just go right up until they have the baby, and they're just working out the whole time, and they really have done well in pregnancy when they. The ones that go that route, they seem to have a pretty easy time in labor from what I've seen from clients that I've had. And they bounce back, it seems like, a lot faster after pregnancy as far as getting back to their weight or their pre-pregnancy weight. So thank yeah, you for, for sharing did. those tips. I think that's really huge help to women. And um, I want to tell you all that one of the things that Flavia is doing for us that's just awesome, and we want to say big thanks, is she's giving us like the ultimate hookup, ladies or guys. She is actually, and I'm going to provide a link below 
the video in the description or if you're on my blog you'll see a link below the actual interview and there's a link there where you can go and you can get Blavalicious cooking and this is only for a limited time it's only gonna be up for a couple of days but she's giving our viewers 60% off so Big high five, Flavia. Thank you so much for giving us that awesome hookup. That's just a crazy, insane deal. And we just, I'm just so excited for people to be able to get this. And hey, why not when it's 60% off? That's awesome. So thank you for interviewing and thank you for giving us that great, awesome deal. Oh, well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. I really, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, and if, if you all want to um, check out that link, just check it out below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will post all the links to your stuff, Flavia, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.